All right, first of all, I want to compliment you again on all the work you've been doing this week with your biographies and your narrative nonfictions, because what, what you're doing with them is hard. You guys are really working hard with these. Um, yesterday, we talked about the standards we're working on, right? We're going to just talk about it again today, too, just to remember what, we're, what our focus is this week. So on the wall over there, we have our one standard we worked on before with the main idea and details. Now, when we read nonfiction, we look for the main idea and the details. But not only that, now this week we're adding this standard um, where we're describing the overall structure of a book. And that includes like cause and effect, problem and solution, compare and contrast. And are you doing that with your books? Yes. 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 So, and you're all doing that. You're not just doing it in this book that you have, you also have another book that we're going to start looking at those two, two books together, kind of, it's called Parallel, where you're looking at one book and you're not just saying this book is always going to be true, we think it is, but there might be something you learn in another book and sometimes when you're reading two books about the same person or the same topic, you might find conflicting details. Sometimes you hear this book, this person did something, you know, great, da 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 da, but then in this book it might say, it might not say anything about it, or it might say something different. So we have to kind of discern and look through these facts and kind of make sure what we're reading is true. And I think you're doing a good job at that. Um, and we also talked about choices being like pivotal. When we're looking for choices in our books, we're looking for those choices that are life-changing, not like pancakes or waffles. Like if I said, do you want pancakes or waffles, it's not going to change your life. Some biographies are going to be achievement stories, where your characters, character traits of the achiever, that's your person, are established sometimes through tales of a childhood. So your book might start out with tales of a childhood experience, where you learn about the character. And sometimes, the circumstances of the achiever will later fight, they'll fight for something or against something. Like your person in your book is going to be, feel strongly about one thing, they're going to have challenges, they're going to fight for it or against it. Like if it was um, fighting against slavery, that would be fighting against something. But if you were fighting for freedom, you'd be fighting for something. I'm going to read you a little bit of this book, and here's a picture of the challenger. The seven astronauts of the Space Shuttle Challenger waited for days at Cape Canaveral before liftoff. The mission was put off several times for reasons ranging from problems with machinery to bad weather. At last, at 11.38 a.m. Eastern Time, on January 28, 1986, Challenger's booster rockets fired with a huge thrust. Challenger left the launch pad and rose into the sky. Crowds of people watched in the winter morning air at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. <coughs> Television viewers tuned in all around the world to watch the launch, including hundreds of thousands of U.S. school children. Only 73 seconds into the mission, Challenger exploded. The entire crew died. At that time, it was the worst disaster in the history of the space program. People everywhere were shocked by the tragedy. And the caption says, the Space Shuttle Challenger takes off from Cape Canaveral in Florida on its last flight. The shuttle was powered by the brown colored tank, which held liquid nitrogen and oxygen fuel catches fire very easily. It also had two white booster rockets, one of which can be seen here. This book I'm going to put up for later, and you're welcome to read it. Okay, it's really good. I encourage you to read it because this is a historical moment. <coughs> The shuttle program's aim was to develop spacecraft that could carry equipment into space. Columbia, the first space shuttle, was launched in 1981. By 1986, there had been nine more successful shuttle missions. So there are also success stories with the shuttles. People were more interested in the Challenger than in any event since the launch of Columbia. Many people followed preparations for the flight. Challenger was carrying Krista McAuliffe the first member of the teacher in space program. She was a high school teacher from Concord, New Hampshire. McAuliffe would be the first American civilian to fly in space. I remember this so well because it was a big deal. Every single night on the news it was on TV. She left her job in Concord, New Hampshire and moved her family to Florida for a whole year to get ready and the news people followed her because it was a big deal to send a teacher into space. Krista was picked from 11,000 people for the Challenger mission. 11,000. 
She trained for a year as an astronaut with NASA, and students throughout the country followed Nicole's progress on TV as she got ready for the flight. The mission was to put satellites into place. The satellites would help astronomers who are scientists who study space, space follow Haley's comment. So I'm going to stop there, but this book is a different type of narrative nonfiction. Your narrative nonfiction books are going to fall into two categories. They're going to be either an achievement story or a, can you guess what this is called? Not an achievement, a disaster. And guess what this is called at the top of the book? I covered it. Disasters. Right now, I want you to look at the person you're studying. Pick up your biography. And I want you to think about what you've read so far. Like, not all of you have read more than a couple chapters. Some of you have read more, some of you have not. So look at your books and kind of flip through it. If you haven't read the whole thing, go through and look at the chapter titles and the pictures and see if you think your book's going to be an achievement or a disaster. Now, don't say that loud. <laughs> All right, now I want you to turn and talk to your partner. Turn and talk and tell your partner, partner A, pick a partner A, partner A, start first. Turn and talk and tell your partner what you think your book is and why. Go. Yeah, my book's definitely a disaster. Mine's definitely an achievement. So some of you probably have those disaster type narrative nonfiction books or some of you won't find out until you finish the book because some books start out with a person does something great but then at the end they're not known for that greatness. They're known for something that's not so great. So you're going to find out as you keep reading what kind of book yours is. So I'm going to keep this in the classroom for you to keep reference to about achievement stories so that as we go on and I might meet with you and say, what type of book do you think you're reading? If you feel like your book is an achievement story of something that, has, that the character fights for or against, you're going to know. Before I send you off, I wanted to share Lily's. Now, Lily had a little bit of a dilemma, kind of a conundrum, a little problem, because Lily picked a biography earlier that really she found, um, she wanted to read about Elvis Presley, but she didn't have a whole book about Elvis Presley. She had books about rock and roll and famous musicians, and each book had like a snippet of Elvis Presley, but it wasn't enough to, where is Lily? It wasn't enough to carry her through two weeks worth of work. So we decided yesterday, Lily made a choice that she had to switch people because there was not another book on Elvis Presley in our media center. We only had one, and it's checked out. So she had to make a pivotal choice because she's already three days into working. She decided, I'm going to switch books. The consequence was last night she had to do a lot of work at home, and she did. And that's why I want to share what she did because this shows me that Lily overcame the challenge. This is a perfect example, Lily, to, to go with our chart today. So Lily went home and she read a lot, and she caught up with three days worth of work at home. And you know how we're keeping a journal of our person? She wrote this. I am Ferdinand Magellan. My family had very little power or money. I was the youngest of three children in my family. My family owns a farm, which means we have to live on the upstairs of the farm. Sometimes it smells bad. See, she's in the book. Has she jumped into the book? Yes, that's exactly what you should be doing. I grew up in Portugal. My life was not always like this. It started to change when I was 12. 
I'm wondering if this is coming up. Not too much later, I got a job, but I was, it was a choice. It was a choice by the queen herself. The queen gave him a job? Wow. I ran errands for the royal family. It was a big job, and I knew I had, it had to be perfect. I reviewed a good education. I received, sorry, I'm trying to reach for I received a good education and met the most important people in the land. I left home for Lisbon, the capital of Portugal. Today, now I like, jumped right into the story. Today, uh, I have found, I found myself in a place I've never seen before. The dock was overflowing with goods from faraway ports. Their gold and silk and also spices like nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. Um, they're used to make beer. They're also used to make spoiled meat taste better. Remember we learned about that in Explorers, that they had spices were so valuable? And to keep it from spoiling, the spices cost so much money. I better know, I better know they're expensive. That is because they came from Asia. Traveling from Europe to their islands were dangerous. The only way to bring spices from far away was the spice roots. And that's, this is what we're learning about. This is great. So Lily, good job. You have caught up and now you're ready to go. Yay. Okay, so today while you're reading, just remember these things, choices, challenges, achievements. And I want you to keep taking your notes and I want you to write in your journals and keep journaling like you were the person jumping into the biography. You're doing a great job and I'm going to meet with the people who need a little boost right now are going to stay with me and everyone else, off you go. I shared Lily's today instead of mine because hers was way better than the work I did last night.
choice. He's going to have to. He's going to be able to start learning about something much deeper. Didn't he always like to study with the stars? Now he has tools like books and telescopes. So what do you think he's going to start doing every single night? He's going to get much deeper into it. So I'm going to write down. Ben. Ben was given. I'm going to call those tools. Tools, right? Like resources or tools to do what he loves the most. He's working on the Well, he did love working on the farm, but what did he love the most, Mason? Studying the stars. Okay, and then I know because I sort of know what he did to become famous that this is going to be a huge thing for him because he does something. I'm not going to tell you yet. But he does something that was incredible with all the stuff he learned from the telescope and the astronomy books. So can I share this with Ariel? Because he hasn't written anything. And can I just share what you have? All right. So Lucas is reading about it. looks a little different than yours, but it's really very similar to type books. And as he's reading the biography, he's taking notes in his journal. He's not using sticky notes. He said, I'm going to write in the journal instead. So he's writing some notes, and he's taking these notes. Please don't interrupt, okay? I'm going to listen right now, but this might help you too. He's taking some notes in his journal, and then he's taking these journal notes and transferred them into a diary. And he's pretending that he's Louis Armstrong. And he wrote this. Hey, Grandma, let's not be late for church. So in your book, did he go to church a lot with his grandma? It was his favorite day was Sunday. His favorite day was Sunday. So and I love when he came over here, I both of his books. He had his, like, cartoon character bobblehead book on Albert Einstein. Then he had another nonfiction book on Albert Einstein that he's reading both. Well, the end result was I got expelled from school. Yay! This is Albert Einstein. You got to go. I was probably it was probably because I asked too many questions. So that's the choice I made, and the consequence was I got expelled from school. Our family moved to Italy. I was very embarrassed to have failed. When I reached Italy, I thought it was friendly, civilized, and open-minded. You feel like you knew about Albert Einstein through his journal, and all of this came from his book. It's all based on texts. Neil's not making any of this up. So this is a really cool person to learn about. Oh, Good job. He soon became a conductor on the Underground Railroad, so many a slaves escaped under her guidance. Then she became a well-respected woman in the army. Overall, Harriet Tubman did some pretty amazing things. She made such a pivotal choice when she escaped to the North alone. When news about her began to get around, she made, pi she made pivotal choices when she went back South. The consequence was when she followed an escaping slave and got hit in the head with the weight, so she would faint and fall into a deep sleep for the rest of her life. On the go. What a rough trip. We sailed and sailed. Twice my men planned meat to me. How horrible. We sailed through warm weather and cold. Some of the ship some of our ships sank, but we are still going. We traded with the natives of Brazil and got cool things like pineapples and chickens. Oh I hope we can make it to El Paso. Oh my gosh, did you hear? King Manuel stole half of my food and supplies before we even started the journey. I realized that when I was down in the place where the icebergs were. Luckily, there was crab and birds, so we wouldn't starve. Ferdinand Magellan. 